Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about what happens when your pistol optic gets wet. There are still a great deal of myths and a great deal of misinformation out there in the world regarding MRDS for handguns. Uh, because it's relatively new compared to rifles, there are people who don't trust it, uh, people who have had pedestrian experience with it and found they didn't like it because they weren't instantly good with it, therefore it must not be good. And of course, people who just make assumptions or pass along bad information without actually critically thinking about what they're repeating. Uh, I've addressed this in the past. I did a video not too long ago uh, talking about duty use of the, the MRDS in regards to fogging when coming out of an air-conditioned vehicle or environments like that. And we kind of put that to bed. Uh, it's probably something I'll cover more in depth in another video where we talk about complete uh, blockage of the RMR or the optic of choice. But in this video, I want to talk about rain. No matter where you are, at some point, water will fall from the sky. Uh, some places more than others. I'm here in Georgia, where it rains quite a bit. It's not quite as bad as the Pacific Northwest, or even further south in Georgia, down by Savannah into Florida, but we do get our fair share of rain. It's been raining all week. That doesn't stop me from going to the range, because I own rain gear and I need to justify the money that I spent on it. Uh, but one of the issues that comes up, again, we already talked about that, is, is water getting on our RMR. Now first, we need to think about the problem critically. Uh, because all things are due, the attention they're due, in order to understand them completely so we can be as proficient as possible. This is not, again, a pedestrian thing where we should just be good enough or understand it just a little bit to kind of get the gist. No, you need to be specific. So if you carry a concealed handgun, then your optic is probably less likely to encounter extended exposure to water. Uh, if you don't occupationally work in, in, a, in like law enforcement, even in those guys that work plain clothes in law enforcement. If it's raining, you've probably got some sort of rain gear on or your exposure to the rain is gonna be somewhat limited. Now that doesn't mean you can't be drenched in the time it takes you to walk from the parking lot to a building or a building to a parking lot. It's still very possible, but by the firearm being concealed, it does limit the type of exposure the optic is going to get to water. For those of you that work in law enforcement, you're especially duty carry, much more likely to encounter weather. Uh, sometimes you have to stand out in inclement weather for extended periods of time and that can create an issue uh, with improper gear or attention to gear uh, with your MRDS handgun. There are, there is, well, really one really good holster uh, that helps mitigate as much as possible exposure to weather and that's the Farland's RDS holster. It has an optional shroud, which I prefer to leave on my holster because of the fact that it's going to prevent rainwater or weather in general um, from collecting on my rear screen or my the rear of my window, my optical end, if you will. Uh, so that's definitely something we can do to help mitigate our exposure to water. Another thing that we can do uh, is treat our lens properly. Me personally, and there's a bunch of different um, feelings on this out there, a bunch of different uh, recipes, if you will. Uh, I treat the inside of my lens, uh, the shooter side of my lens, the optical side of my lens with uh, uh, cat crap, uh, which is an anti-fogging agent. And then I'll treat the outside with Rain-X uh, because I don't want any water collecting there, just in the, the general doom shooting. And then the midder window, I personally treat that with cat crap as well because I'm much more concerned with fogging, even though fogging is less is very unlikely to happen, um, especially since I consider I carry my gun concealed most of the time, which means the gun is kept next to the body heat, next to moisture. Uh, so when the firearm is introduced into a hot environment where fogging is likely to occur, the gun is already maintained at a higher temperature due to my body heat, so fogging is less likely. So I'm more worried about fogging than I am water, and I'm gonna get to why. So the two general concerns are either water on the rear window, front window, or water on the emitter, which is in there. And, and depending on the optic you have, your emitter is gonna be slightly different. Not all optics are created equal. Some emitters are less protected than others. Um, and sometimes if you get water in the emitter of certain optics out there, the optic will stop working because water gets inside the electronics and kills the optic, which is not a problem with uh, my, my chosen optic of choice, the RMR. If water gets on the emitter screen, the general feeling is it's gonna refract the beam and cause uh, a problem with my ability to shoot accurately. And that may be possible, but it's probably only gonna be an issue, a potential issue for one round. Because as soon as I fire that first shot, the G-forces of the slide cycling under power 
uh, are going to clear that optic window. And in fact, it's going to clear a lot of the water off your optic lens, especially if you treat your lens. Now, I purposely have not treated this RMR because I knew at some point I was going to get lucky enough to have a day where I could get to the range when it was raining to make a video about this very topic. So this optic is untreated. So the water will affect this optic in the worst case scenario uh, based on the rain that I have. Because even though water's going to fall from the sky for me and for you, uh, not all rain is created equal depending on where you are geographically. So if by the nature of my carry position, hip exposed carry, uh, nothing protecting my window, or I've just had the firearm out for a while for whatever reason uh, in the environment where it's raining, first concern is going to be condensation which causes fogging. Uh, as you can see here, uh, both sides are fogged up really good, but I'm still able to PID and shoot. Uh, it wouldn't be a problem to use my, my optical point of aim, my red dot, uh, to look through using occlusion if I have to, to be able to shoot my target and be able to get really good hits. Not an issue. Uh, if you remember a video I did on the pa in the past, I covered specifically fogging of the optic window and showed how you would overcome that. Now, if the emitter fogs, uh, your dot will become considerably refracted to the point where it might not necessarily be usable. That is a potential issue, especially if the firearm is kept away from body heat in very, very humid environments, such as summer in Miami, and you're getting out of a patrol car and you're worried about, or you've already experienced, maybe your emitter window is fogging. In that situation, if you treat that emitter window periodically with an anti-fogging agent such as cat crap, it's going to considerably reduce the chance of that happening. This is, of course, one potential negative concern. It's unlikely, but it does happen uh, if the optic is left untreated. We gotta be able to take care of our gear there. And one of the obvious issues with this is if the emitter fogs up and the windows fog up, you can't really use your iron sights. So you can't go to your backup sighting system. So then you're left using an alternate method such as guillotine shooting, or if you've got time, distance, and cover, you can just stick your pinky in there, clear it off, go back to work. So let's talk specifically about the concern. Water on the emitter window, which is going to refract my beam. Uh, the water has to present in such a way that not just one big drop, because if you get one big drop on the emitter, it's just going to see through it. It's not going to refract in any way. What you're really concerned with is really, really tiny micro droplets collecting in, in a random fashion, which refracts the beam and creates kind of a, a starburst effect projected out. Here's the thing. Think critically about this problem. If you have zeroed your optic, and your optic is zeroed properly. Uh, you have two options. You can either go to your iron sights, which you don't have to, but they're there, or think about the problem. If the optic, if the dot optic is zeroed, and during normal conditions, you find that dot roughly centered in your window on presentation of the target, then it's not gonna change just because the emitter window is wet. If I press out and I have a starburst effect, I'm gonna use the dot closest to the center of where I'm shooting, and that's going to be my point of aim. And don't take my word for it, go to the range, get yourself a little eyedropper or something and actually put some water on the emitter and test this theory test because you'll find as soon as you test it, like, hey, this isn't a theory, this actually works. This is the thing that I can do and I, now I can regain some of the trust in my equipment. If you don't shoot uh, MRDS, you don't own MRDS, maybe you shouldn't be passing along nonsense information on the internet about how you're gonna get killed in the streets if your optic gets wet. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, people want to be against something in the gun community, and we're all somewhat guilty of that. Uh, I myself sometimes look at stuff and kind of scratch my head, and there's varying degrees of, of, of uh, applicability, I guess, for you know what I'm scratching my head about. Some products just make no sense to me whatsoever, and I wouldn't be caught dead with them. But something like a, an optic on a handgun, which is quickly becoming the norm, especially in law enforcement, uh, I'm seeing more and more and more departments adopted. I've been contacted by numerous police departments across the country about uh, fine-tuning their training program uh, for their MRDS that they're allowing officers to buy or they're issuing to officers immediately. So yes, weather is going to happen. It's unavoidable. Uh, if your gun is carried in an exposed fashion, you can probably expect at some point for water to come in contact with your optic. If you carry concealed, it's less likely, but still possible, so you should still take the same preventative steps uh, to ensure that if you do need your optic in a rain-like or moisture or wet environment or foggy environment or humid environment, that your optic is going to be usable in the moment that you need it. Of course, the argument may be, well, iron sights don't have this problem. Uh, yeah, okay, neither do rocks or spears or slings, you know, like that doesn't really help anybody. I guess the idea is, well, because one thing is potentially a negative, then we should just go back to the, the, the two sticks and the one stick. Um, no, because that's primitive. Uh, and we don't want to be primitive if we can find a better way, a more physiologically 
reasonable way uh, to do things, which is why the MRDS is such a great uh, system. Um, and of course, there's always going to be people who detract it. We are right now where we were 20 years ago with the um, adoption of red dots on rifles. It's the same conversations, it's the same mentality. There's a few tweaks here and there, but the FUDs are still rolling out their greatest hits about uh, what they don't like and why they don't like it and how this is better than that and I've been shooting this way my whole life and yada, 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 yada. Uh, but those people don't own dot guns and they probably won't. So if you have or you're interested in getting uh, an optic on your handgun, this is one way that you can address potential issues, especially if you have a real concern based on occupation or just environment. You live in a rainy environment, even if you do carry concealed and your clothing is generally going to protect your optic, you should probably still take these steps. Uh, Rain-X and Cat Crap are two great products when used properly and periodically on the optic uh, with a reasonable schedule. I think me, myself, I retreat mine uh, every time it comes in contact with what it's there to prevent, such as rain or, or humidity, uh, excessive fogging of the lens or something like that. Or just uh, every week or so, get a Q-tip, hit it up. It's not a big deal. It's part of my weekly preventative maintenance that I do to my carry guns because I do carry a dot gun uh, full time uh, because... I mean, you've got to practice what you preach, right? And it's a system that I definitely believe in. And in all the environments I've shot in MR MRDS in, mud, rain, snow, sleet, hail, extreme cold, extreme heat, uh, I've never encountered a situation where I was like, you know what, I don't like this anymore. Because even with the potential possibility for, for optic failure, which exists with rifles as well, the uh, rewards greatly outweigh the risks. So... Check it out yourself, um, and if you're, hopefully, I've changed some minds and you're able to now pass on better information, and feel free to show this video to uh, any of the, the naysayers that you know, and hopefully I'm able to convince them as well that like, hey, it's not that big of a deal, but don't just trust. Get some water and a gun with an optic on it and verify. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.